No hard questions. Will be all <laughs> all hard hard questions. All, nothing but nothing but should be hard. This is your life. Be okay, he's wait. almost here. Actually, I can do it while. Do you want to wait on him? We can wait on him. Um, yeah, let me ask him because I want to get. If he's almost here, that'd probably be better. He could sit in or and do his thing. Go go strong. Or whatever. Hey, I got you on speaker. Are you are you here? Okay, well, we're going to go ahead and get started then, but we're just now getting started, so no sweat. All right, when I come in, if you're already talking, that's fine. I'm just going to, uh, just ignore me. Okay, I will do All that. Right, I'll see you then. All righty, bye. Does he know, right, does he know what, uh, exactly. does he know the room number or anything? Yeah, like, I just sent him what you sent me. Um, what do I need to tell him? So, second last door on the right, on the right okay. is the back door, and then he'll come up the ramp. And it's the, Where should we the left? second to the which door? Uh, so when you walk in, it's the second to last door on the right. Okay. And walk up the ramp. Yeah, he'll walk up. Basically, the ramp. walk straight ahead. Yep. Yeah. And into the wall. And then it's the door on the left. I wonder what they're doing at, over at the Panther Stadium. I see this crane moving, and it's creeping me out because it's just barely moving. Park in the parking lot, come through that door. Yeah. Probably a help in rehabilitate, uh, rehabilitate uh, Cam Newton's shoulder. That's uh, not very nice. <laughs> and, and also, uh, I'm a huge Panther fan. Um, do Park cranes move like really slow? Oh, yeah, they have to. Think about it. Who moves slow? Cranes. 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 Oh, yeah. Yeah, think about it. 10,000 pounds yeah, you moving. You don't want to swing that around and not be able to stop it. Yeah, you don't want to speed it up. Then it gets even heavier. Exactly. It's like spooking me because it's, it's moving so slow. Yeah. I can barely tell. Yeah. It stopped now, but like, all right. So we ready to rock? Yeah. Yep. All right. All righty. I, I will. And we are on. Welcome to the Business Legends Podcast, where we interview business leaders and entrepreneurs so that you can learn from their mistakes, pump up your own inspiration, and grow your bottom line. I'm the host of the show, Reese Arlen, along with my co-host, CEO of Business Marketing Solutions Group, Mr. Christian Webb. Say what's up? Thanks for all that sound HR advice this morning. Yes, yes indeed. We have a very special guest today, Miss, Mrs. April Sip, uh, what's your last name? April Simpkins. Simpkins, I had it yes. right. I, I was thinking that <laughs> so. My, my, the, the, the actual host of the show has had a little too much coffee. A little too much coffee, <laughs> dude. I'm ready to go. We're going to just fire some crazy questions your way. Um, let me introduce April. April is a successful HR strategist who helps business owners and community leaders attract and retain talent. More importantly, she helps businesses become great places to work. April, how are you doing this morning? I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. Thank you for joining us this morning and dealing with my with my coffeeness. No um, you know, I'm I'm about two to three in, so I might be talking a little bit quicker than usual over here, but. Um, it's I Christian's fault. Follow? It's Christian's <laughs> fault. It's Christian's <laughs> fault. Just, just like everything else in the world. Um, you know, I kind of want to piggyback a little bit on the conversation we were having over coffee. Um, just differences in diversity in the workplace. Um, I mean, you know, so with HR in general, I mean, you deal with all the tough questions, all the all the things that people don't want to talk about. Right. Um, you know, in our current climate in 2019, when people are becoming offended and having all sorts of different uh, challenges and struggles and whatnot. Um, what types of things have you seen, especially as of late? You know, one, of the, one thing I've seen of late is that the workplace tends to follow what's going on in the greater population. It tends to just bleed over, and some of that is caused by social media and people being connected at work. So what people are talking about at home or amongst their friends is now visible to people at work. There used to be this kind of line of demarcation. You're at work, and you're expected to focus on work. But now that we've blurred so many lines, people are bringing into work what is going on in the greater population. So, you know, if in the community we're talking about uh, a workplace shooting, people are going to talk about that at sure. work. If we're talking about um, conflicts in politics, people are going to talk about that at work. If there's a racial issue going on in our society, people are going to talk about that at work. And it's tough, I think, if you are an entrepreneur without good support from HR folks or from employment law attorneys, you are in uncharted waters. It's almost tough even if you are in HR, but if you don't yeah. have that kind of background, dealing with those differences uh, can be a challenge. There, there's so many things that 
we just don't think about, you know? And one of the things we were discussing at coffee was transgender relations, which is a huge topic in our society right now. And, you know, things like changing the address of the email from he to she or she to he, and things like, um, you know, how to make people get the job done, not necessarily be best friends, like you said, and, you know, grabbing beers after, after work or whatever, but just getting their job done and, and doing the work. It, it's a tremendous challenge, you know, and it seems like that, do you, do you feel like, well, let me ask you, do you feel like the challenge is getting harder or do you think it's getting easier as our society develops? I mean, honestly, I think it's getting harder and that's really unfortunate yeah, because I'd, I'd now, agree. I would agree. yeah, we have so much access to information. So you almost think that the internet and having all that data at your fingertips would make people more receptive. Mm -hmm. But I think it does the reverse of that. Yeah. It allows people to find community based on their fears and biases. Mm -hmm. So you begin to think that the way you're thinking is acceptable because six people just hit like on your post. Right. Yeah. Um, and so instead of trying to learn, you're just looking for what validates and confirms what you're thinking yeah. and become closed off. And so I think it's become more of a challenge. I don't think we're as open-minded as we potentially could be because we have access to information. Yeah, the, it's like the affirmation increases the divide. You are so correct. It's it's very tough, you know, and, and our culture trying to be inclusive and, and having people of different colors and backgrounds, mm -hmm. religions, sexual preferences, and things like that, um, it's a problem that's not going to go away, you know? And I, one of the things is I think that a lot of people want to maintain an inclusive environment, but, you know, make it like colorblind. You know, when I was when I was in grad school, for example, uh, one of my professors said, "Oh, I'm colorblind. I don't care if you're white or black." And I said, "I said that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life." I agree. Be because, <laughs> like, you know, you're black, I'm white. Cool. Absolutely. Like, you know, we have different upbringings, we have different cultures, and that's great. That's beautiful. That's unique. You know, and it's very interesting that people are are so you know they they want to be so PC about things and and you know not kind of flow with the punches. I, I would absolutely agree. It's funny you would say that because I do kind of sigh when I hear people say that I don't yeah. see color. Of course you see color. Yeah, of course you do. And to say that you don't almost says I don't want to address it. Yeah. You know, I don't want to have to deal with anything that may come with that. So if I just say I don't see it, then I'm going to always say the right thing or right. know that I'm not holding it against you. Yeah. Um, and I think that that really is the wrong approach. You should see color. What you should not do is see being different as bad, right? Right. So we can all be different colors, races, um, we can be different genders, nationalities, and that should be a good thing yeah. and not something that we have to erase and leave at the door so that we can all put on this one same cloak and look the same and behave the same. Mm -hmm. That's no fun. Yeah. Would you say that that's, that's the primary directive of human resources in general these days is, is learning how to integrate different businesses and different people together like that? I absolutely do. And I think, unfortunately, um, the words diversity and inclusion have narrowed themselves all the way down almost to race. Yeah. And so I think when you mention those words, diversity and inclusion, people begin to shut down mm -hmm. and think, you know, uh, here comes another race relations talk, or yeah. now they want us to all play nice in the sandbox, and I have these issues. Diversity and inclusion is really about accepting all of the different. Yeah. I do a lot of talks on generational diversity, for example. Yeah, it's a huge And it, it really is. We've got five generations in the workplace, traditionalists, baby boomers, Gen X. Shout out to the Gen Xers. <laughs> <laughs> right. We got millennials, we got Gen Zs coming in. So you've got people who were born during different eras yep. who view things very differently, all now working together in one workplace. I think as a business owner, if you don't give that company an identity, mm -hmm. a culture that says, it's great that we're all different. Yeah. We're gonna make something of that. Um, you will eventually have problems on your hands because people are going to bring those biases that they grew up with, yeah. those thought processes that they learned into the workplace. I mentioned this earlier when we were having coffee, um, that the focus in the workplace has shifted. Yeah. And in my opinion, even as an HR professional, I think it needs to shift back. And I think that's where a lot of HR professionals are pushing things, especially in the larger HR community. We've gone from work being a place where you engage to get something done. It's almost like you're building something together. 
we've moved from that to looking at people and asking, would I be friends with this person? Would I have a beer with this person? Would I hang out with this person? And the answer isn't always yes, and it doesn't have to be. Yeah. But is that person who maybe you wouldn't have coffee with, someone who is so great at their job, you want to partner with them on that next project? Yeah. That is how we need to think. That's where we need it, to It is an interesting paradigm because so often people people want to, I mean, they want to like who they work with. Absolutely. Because that makes the job go by quicker and it makes the makes the workplace a little bit easier. But yes. the, one of the things is that, uh, unfortunately, I think in our society these days, if you and I have a disagreement, I think the Carolina Panthers are the best team in the NFL, period. Well, they are. They are, of course, you know. I but somebody know. like Christian who doesn't even know what a football is shaped like, you know, <laughs> You know, he, he might. He might always disagree with fun. Yeah, he just he's just the, <laughs> he's the he's the devil's advocate. He doesn't primarily just to irritate me. But you know, he might have a difference of opinion. But that doesn't mean that I like him or respect him any less. Exactly. And a lot of times you you run into that issue where just because I disagree with that one thing that you said one time, I'm not going to give you one more chance. Type of thing. You hit the nail on the head. Yeah, you know, there was a time when. It was okay to not agree with everything, mm -hmm. but I still like you as a person. We didn't yeah. have to agree yeah. on everything, and we've lost that yeah. now. And I think part of that has been driven by our social media culture of hitting the like button. You have yeah. to like what I say, otherwise there's going to be a problem. Yeah. Uh, and it shouldn't be that way, especially in the workplace. No, it shouldn't. And I mean, realistically, um, nobody's going to agree with 100% of Everything you say, nobody. I mean, they do. They probably are lying. Well, yeah. life. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, okay. Well, 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 life, you know? Right. And and in fact, I mean, I, I encourage differences of opinion. And, and like you know, like we're talking about, I don't I don't think any less of Christian because he doesn't know what footballs are. You know, it's just whatever. So come on in, come on in. We got we we have Mr. Mesa here. This is this yes, April's second son. Is that right? Yep. Oldest son. Yes. Oldest oldest son. Excuse oldest me, and son. best. Oldest <laughs> and best. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Mesa. Mesa. <laughs> Is, is joining us today to take some take some photos. So thanks for thanks for coming so on. For sure, yeah. yeah. Let's shift gears a little bit here and uh, let's focus on a little bit uh, towards our young entrepreneurs. So you sell us you sell a service that obviously brings a lot of value to businesses. Yes. Heck, you don't give a product. You don't say here's a, here's a here's a little thing you can have for X amount of dollars. How did you build a business that literally gives people nothing except for the knowledge that you that you bring? That is such a great and you know that's a great question. Um, and there are many of us who sit in this seat, I think because you aren't coming into my office like a physician mm -hmm. or like an attorney who also sells their knowledge, yeah. um, people will look at me differently because it's HR. Mm -hmm. So building a business around that was a challenge. Uh, I mentioned before there's, there's this disparity sometimes between what I feel the knowledge is worth and what someone is willing to pay for it. So what I have to do is show people how valuable this knowledge really is. Mm -hmm. And that became my mission, mm -hmm. which wasn't easy, yeah. but that became my mission and focus. So what kind of steps did you take to build that value, uh, value proposition? Um, you know, funny enough, because I'm in HR, and many times, not all the time, but many times when people call me, it's because there's a problem. <laughs> um, the same reason why some people will go see a doctor. There are a number of people who will see a physician because they want to do their physical every year, but let's face it, most people are going to the doctor's office because something is wrong. They're sick. Right. <laughs> people don't want to always admit that they don't have a handle on managing the people in their business. So I couldn't go knocking door to door saying, are you having a problem? Are you having a problem? Right. Because that requires trust. So I had to put my knowledge on display so that people could see its value and then they came to me, and that is how I was able to build such a successful speaking career, yeah. um, because I would stand in front of an audience, and I would share the knowledge, and show them the hypotheticals, and the real scenarios. So, so would you say you took the angle of uh, becoming a thought leader on your topic? I absolutely did, and encouraged people to do that when you, are have, when you have to sell yourself and your knowledge. People want to sample it. I could not point to a home and say, we built that, or a widget and say, we did that. I had to somehow say, this is what the product looks like. Because yeah, even if they're interested in a service from you, they're probably going to look you up right after you leave the office. You are correct. <laughs> you <laughs> you are are like, is, this, is this lady actually doing what she says she yeah. does? Like, Absolutely. Where, where is she at on social media? Like, yeah. What's going on? If you don't have anything, I mean, the next person that does the same thing and they do have something, you lose. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know, it's funny with, I think, anyone who is selling services, 
um, you got to have your sample pack and you got to have the pack people pay for. And those are things I didn't oh, know <laughs> when I started. Like yeah. yeah, when I started my business, I thought everybody had to buy the full package and couldn't get the sample sack and sample packet. So I had to learn to do that. Okay, that's, that's that's some cool stuff. Yeah. Do you think do you think that's a, a new transition in, in the workplace, that, especially with the with the, the bartering of knowledge, the purchase and sale of, of knowledge is you know needing that sample pack, which leads into the into the paid package type of thing. Do you think that's a new development, or do you think it's always kind of been around? I think it's always kind of been around. I think now it's easier to push that sample pack out thanks yeah. to social media, as sure. I mentioned before. You can do a podcast. Yeah. yeah. You can put something out on Instagram. You can put it out on LinkedIn or Facebook, and people can watch you and go, "Wow, she really knows what she's talking mm -hmm. about." Or YouTube. So I think it's easier to do it, but yeah. I think it's always been something that was necessary. Yeah, well, absolutely. But so, what do you think about the difference between between proaction and reaction? So you were talking earlier about how you're either you're either a fireman or a fire marshal, yes. you know, and so um, when it comes to corporate cultures and whatnot, what steps can an entrepreneur take in order to make sure that their culture is inclusive and won't get them sued, basically, right. but but also that, that it would be a culture that people want to be a part of? How can how can they create that, that culture from the ground up? That's a great question. I think the first thing that you have to do when you're establishing a culture is be intentional about it. You cannot be all things to all people. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to not be all things to all people. Mm -hmm. If you really do prefer a more professional culture where people come in dressed like they're going to work and yeah. people are there for a set amount of hours, that's great, present it that way. Uh, if you prefer ping pong tables and you know bean bag chairs, that's yeah. <laughs> fine too. And you'll attract that. You have to be intentional about it. I think where it goes off the rails is when an entrepreneur or business owner doesn't take the time to establish that, mm -hmm. and then they get this kind of mixed bag of nuts. Yeah. You end up with a professional setting, but you're hiring people who want to sit in bean bag chairs, yeah. and then taking offense at it when right. you didn't do your due diligence to say, this is really who we are. This is kind of a funny topic, because I would bet that he's like the more like, the office, the normal knows. office guy. Yeah, yeah. I, would, like, I would like for everybody to be in the I'm the bean bag, yeah. espresso guy. So I was in Portland for two and a half years, and some of the coolest businesses I've ever been in, uh, it was, I'm not gonna say the name, because I don't, I don't know if they want me to, but it's an IT company. And uh, when you walk in, they have, a, they have a small brewery that you can have a, you can have a beer or two during lunch if you wanted to. And then they had bean bag chairs, and it was very well set up for like coffee and lounge. But they were actually the fastest growing IT firm in their field because it was such a relaxed environment. Yes. But then you have the polar opposite examples as well. Yes. Um, but I, I always thought that was really cool. Absolutely. The, the thing that's even more ironic about that is that on average, Christian is better dressed than I am on average. <laughs> so he's the beanbag chair dude, and I'm the person that would prefer everybody to be in a collared shirt. But we're just we're just constantly at ends and yin and yang and whatever it <laughs> is. Know, what it is. I myself am a mixed bag of nuts. Are Honestly, you, I funny. really am. There are days when I go to work. Um, and I really do look like I've just walked out of a fashion magazine. Oh, really? And there are other days when I am when I know that I've got to hunker down. Yeah. And honestly, I'm just Came shy of bare sweats. Like, <laughs> <laughs> right just on. shy of bare sweats, and yeah. so it's kind of a mixed bag um, for me. But I want people to be comfortable. Yeah. Um, when they're at work, obviously, if we're going to present to a client, you want to dress appropriately. But I, I would prefer people feel comfortable. Yeah. yeah. I've often said as a business owner, if you don't take command of that culture the subcultures will grow. Yeah. Uh, sometimes those subcultures are created unintentionally, but again, it's because someone didn't get ahead of it. Let me yeah. give you a perfect example. Yeah, I, was hoping that one. I will see um, a company proud of the fact that they offer generous PTO. Hey, we'll give you two weeks, three weeks as soon as you're hired. Wow. And then you go to take your PTO and you're getting side-eyed. Why are you taking another day off? Oh, you still yeah. got more PTO to use? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Well, here's a form, fill it out and triple it. Ask so for that PTO so, three weeks ahead of time, and if it works, we'll let. So yeah. you've just created a subculture that says, we don't mean what we say. Right. Right. No, yeah. this is, so I went through that. So uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to say their company, but uh, I was with a I was with an equipment rental company uh, <laughs> as a national account manager. Oh, gee, let's let's narrow it down. <laughs> look up Christian on LinkedIn real fast. Please continue. <laughs> yeah, this is before I my business, um, but they literally they have unlimited PTO for their outside sales reps, and uh, and it's not really unlimited. So like uh, it says unlimited, but as soon as you ask, they're like, "How's your goals looking?" Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Incongruency exactly. and message. Incongruency and message. It seems like that's a that's a tough thing. Kit, um, in your experience, have you seen any culture be um, 
maybe a little bit more successful than others. So can you touch on the differences between beanbag chairs and, and uh, rigid offices or, or whatnot? Um, is there, yeah. Has there been any difference for you? Yeah, so let me go backwards a little bit. So in the course of my consulting career, um, and I started about 18 years ago, I've been in HR almost 30, I've worked with almost maybe a little over a thousand entrepreneurs. So I've been wow. in and out of a lot of businesses sure. and talked to a lot, of, a lot of folks. Here's where I see the challenge is when what you want as a culture either doesn't align with your industry, mm -hmm. um, you cannot be comfortable and have a very relaxed atmosphere if you're a physician. Yeah. There's an expectation of professionalism. Yeah. So as much as you want to have fun and high five and laugh and dance, people don't necessarily want to see that when they're right. talking about their health. Yeah. Right. Um, and so if you are in a business that is really heavily relying on outcomes, sales for example, your culture might look a little different. As long as people are producing, you yeah. might think, hey, be comfortable in your space. Yeah. If you want to sit in a beanbag chair, or you want to sit on an exercise ball, if yeah. you just want to lean at a standing desk, whatever, get your outcomes. It's very different than someone who has forward-facing employees, yeah. retail. You've got to be really deliberate. So I really think when, as a business owner, you align your culture with your industry and your expectations, you'll, you'll hit it. You'll, you'll, you'll know where you need to be. Yeah. That's, that's funny you bring up the physician um, uh, example because I know this guy from, <laughs> I'm not, not going to say his name. Um, he's a physician from Mooresville, where I'm from. So again, just find Reese on right. general fast <laughs> figured out. But um, he, one of the things is he's a surgeon. And we from Mooresville, um, we, you know, sometimes we kind of talk a little bit more like this and we have a little bit of a draw, if you know right. what I'm saying. And, um, there are times when I've had to read lips. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, what, what draw? What was Reese talking about? Yeah, what is this? What is this? What is he talking about? Anyway, he, uh, he actually, this is a true story, he went on to, um, what do you call voice lessons yes. or classes or whatever. And, and when, he, when I asked him, I was like, why did you do that? Because I understand him just fine, you know. He said, um, <laughs> his words exactly were, well, I was in the, uh, I was in the, uh, whatever the room, the the room in the hospital, and somebody looked at me real funny when I said, "I'm gonna take out their organ." <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, could you imagine somebody being, like, "Oh yeah, we're gonna cut you up, and then we're gonna, we're gonna afterwards, we're gonna stitch you up, and fix you right." Exactly. You know? It doesn't mean he's not professional, but that would scare me too. That's exactly. Scary to death. Exactly. Scary to death, so. so you want to make sure all those things align. Yeah. And you'll you'll hit the nail on the head. Yeah, so it's kind of funny that, I mean, just little nuances like that come yes. into play. It, yes. It just is what it is. So uh, let me ask you this, April. Where, where do you see human resources uh, developing? You know, it seems like our culture always has, you know, maybe whether it's a group they're discriminating against or somebody that's in the, the prime spotlight of the media. Um, I mean, a great example of that would be like Caitlyn Jenner right now. Um, you know, there's a lot of transgender movements going on about – um, years ago, after September 11th, there was a huge, you know, anti-Muslim factions and whatnot. Um, do you always see these types of things being a problem, or do you think that the culture is going to run out of things to, to kind of look at and point at, type of thing? Um, I think, I think culturally, we, you know, it's the social media is out there. It's mm -hmm. like letting that pillowcase of feathers loose at the top of the mountain. You're not going to be able to pull it back, and right. because of that, these things are always going to bleed one into the other. I think the challenge for many businesses and HR alike is staying ahead of it. Yeah. Um, when you see it bubbling up, get on the front side of it and put the messaging out. Mm -hmm. I've seen that with a lot of businesses um, doing that and I think it's the right way to go. Mm -hmm. If your business, for example, um, is very friendly to parents with children who want to balance work life. Yeah. Uh, and there's a big story maybe in the news and the media about a company that fired a mom because she needed to go take care of her, her child who was sick. That's the perfect time for a company to come back with their messaging and remind employees that we are family friendly and mm -hmm. what that means to us. And you'll relax a lot of that rhetoric yeah. that can turn into conflict in the workplace. Yeah. So I think that's the important part. when. When Bruce Jenner transitioned to Caitlyn Jenner, there was a process. I remember watching that in the news when yeah. 
you know, there were these big stories, you know, all of a sudden his Adam's apple is gone. He's growing his hair longer. What yeah. is going on? I think that's the time, again, when employers want to get on the front side of it. Mm -hmm. And if your messaging is going to be, we're inclusive and we're receptive, that's great. If your message is going to be, hey, if you're going through something difficult or challenging, here's the resources for you. Whatever that is, when an employer gets ahead of it, they're being the fire marshal. Yeah. Right. Yeah, they're kind of taking care of the problem before they that anyone has to be a problem. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I would, I, I agree with you, but again, if I could go back to, we've got five generations in the workplace, yeah. right? And so a traditionalist born 1922 to 1945, and there are a few who are still in the workplace, they see things very differently. That sure. is a generation, uh, earlier baby boomers, who were before Title VII. So mm -hmm. sexual harassment, I remember, this is so funny, uh, when Mad Men, which was a yep. critically acclaimed show, yep. came out, I thought, you know, I might want to watch that. It got mm -hmm. great reviews, and I could not get past episode two oh, as wow. an HR person. Everything, I was like, they can't say that. Oh, they yeah, make cringe. Tell her her lipstick yeah. is too red. Did yep. he just tell her to shorten her skirt? Um, but that's a generation. Yep. That was acceptable. Right. There was women's work and men's work. And so when you blend all of that and put technology in the mix as well, mm -hmm. you better have someone who's staying on the front side of this. Yep. As a business owner, that probably is going to be you yeah. or someone you designated yeah. to get that messaging in. Somebody that's in that role. Absolutely. So, so right now person. I see it because I mean, I'm on social media looking at marketing all the time for good ideas and just staying ahead yeah. of it. And um, I see HR companies like trying to do this huge net to where all these people are now moving to like online HR support, and like there's so much of it. Like yeah. starting out for ninety nine dollars a month, yeah. right. I'm like, what could that possibly cover? Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and it's like there's no way that covers anything important. So here's what I would say. I do see that as well. I think sometimes it serves a purpose. Um, I have some online resources, but I know what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. right? um, I tell people in determining what kind of HR makes sense for you, think of it as going into Home Depot. If you want to put a deck on the back of your house, there are some people who think, I can do this myself. I'm not a GC, but I've done it before. I know what I need. They can go to Home Depot, get all their tools, and they're fine to DIY. So Home Depot is there for them. There are other people who think, I'm willing to put in some sweat equity. I can help, but I can't manage this whole thing. And then there are others who think, I'm not even going near it. Please let someone come here and build it. That would be us, Absolutely. for sure. <laughs> so think of it that way. You've the got phone. these yeah. online resources. Think of that as Home Depot. Yeah. Like, there are some people who really could go, like myself. I know what I'm looking for. I know what I need. Yeah. Uh, and then there's the other opposite end of the spectrum. There's people who don't even try it. Your deck could collapse and yeah. create all kinds of problems. You need to go find somebody who can do that for you. So I do think there's a place for that. It's not for everybody. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, I know so many business owners that literally just like check the box on that. Absolutely. It's yeah. like, oh, I heard I needed HR. And yeah. Yeah. You check. <laughs> right. Uh, and I say this because, you know, you've got you've got to comply with a lot of different things, and laws are changing all the time. You've got a federal Department of Labor that lays out kind of, hey, you're blanket across the board. Here's your bench, you know, here's your baseline. But every single state has got their own version of a Department of Labor. Mm -hmm. So I will hear someone say, well, I read this, or I saw this, and that may be so, but what does your state say? Yeah. Minimum wage federally is seven and a quarter. Right. Some states, $15. Yep. If you're in that state, you better not pay someone seven and a quarter. I don't care if the federal just said that. The state said something different. So if you are a, a person not familiar with HR, you may not know to check that out on both yeah. sides. You may yeah. just think because I read it or saw it, mm -hmm. it must be so. So what, what's your opinion on in-house HR versus hiring an outsourced company? Um, I'm probably biased. I think every I think every business owner, because of the climate we're in, should have access to an HR professional. Somebody who's got their finger on the pulse mm -hmm. of what is changing. We got another major change coming up with minimum wage and overtime rules starting January first. So you want your, someone with finger on the pulse. But you may not have either the budget or the workload. You got 10 people, you don't need someone like me on your staff, right. you need access to someone like me. How you get that access, do that according to your budget and your needs. Yeah, that's that's really great advice, you know. Yeah. And one of, one of the things about having people in-house, unfortunately, is that you mentioned your own bias, but how could you be around somebody 24 seven or you know week in, week out and not have bias? I mean, I'm sure that whoever, whatever person name, person A that does HR for company 
X, Y, Z. I mean, I'm sure they're going to have friends in the workplace. Yeah, if I cut your check, so. it's going to make you, and it's going to make it harder for you to, to tell me I'm doing something wrong. And that's when you hire April. <laughs> for sure, you know? I mean, it's just, it, it seems like common Absolutely. sense. There like, are times, and I'll tell you when it's also challenging, because it's a whole other podcast to talk about family in the workplace. It's oh, funny, yeah. Because as I mentioned, Ace is our director of marketing. Yeah. But um, I have been called into termination meetings when a family member had to terminate another oof, family member. Oof, oof, and that rough. is really hard. And... You know, fortunately for them, they had us. Yeah. And I think when you get family members, if you're an entrepreneur or a business owner and you're starting out, it's very easy as a startup to tap on the shoulder of family members and close friends mm -hmm. and say, will you help me? At some point, though, you may outgrow them. Yeah. Because right? their skill set may not be what you need, yeah. but their loyalty was. Right. And now you need to put someone in a position who has skill and yeah. not just loyalty. Yeah. And so you've got to part ways. And that is very hard to do, but you need to do it for business sake. Yeah. That is when someone like me is very helpful because yeah. I can work to, to kind of smooth that out, that transition out. There, there's so many things we take for granted just because we're not in your space, you know? Yeah. And, um, you know, just like we had originally discussed with the difference of pronouns when you're speaking to people who have, you know, transgender, making the transition and whatnot. And, right. Um, and, and things like that. What what types of things do you think companies can do in order to avoid problems in the long term? So, um, you know, obviously diversity and inclusion is something that benefits every company, but how can companies, um, for example, I was telling you my example of, of including more people of, say, different colors into different organizations that I'm in. What, what steps can companies and people do in order to be a little bit more inclusive towards people of different culture? I think there's a few things that companies can do, and there's some things that are already being done that I think you can scale either way. Um, it's a little more challenging for a very small company, mm -hmm. maybe a little easier for a, a mid-sized or growing company. Uh, I would say step one, if you are looking to attract a demographic, for example, and I get this question a lot, someone will say, wow, our workplace, we just feel like it's, it's too homogenous. We really yeah. want diversity, but sure. how do we do this, April? Um, I tell them, step one, educate yourself. Mm -hmm. um, do a training on implicit bias. We have them. Um, it's just your, your brain's basic fight or flight uh, mechanism. So you want to first make it a receptive workplace instead of bringing someone in and expecting them to educate everyone. Yeah. That's a heavy burden. For sure. So if you are looking, for example, um, to attract people from the African American community, the Latina community, go ahead and start reaching out into those communities. Find opportunities to sponsor. Go sit in on a lecture or begin to learn and educate yourself. When someone does come to you, they will feel well received. And yeah. I've said this also about veteran initiatives. Don't just say we want to hire veterans. What are you doing now? Yeah. What are you doing to celebrate Veterans Day? How are you recognizing re veterans in the community? And they will find you. It's almost like the law of attraction. Yeah. So you can begin to do that. And do that where you are. When, you know, I love Oktoberfest. It's a great time to learn about yeah. the German community. I love uh, Black History Month. It's a great time to learn about how um, you know, African Americans have contributed to our community. So begin there. Start yeah. participating and learning and educating yourself. Develop affinity groups, and yeah. a lot of larger companies have those. It's okay to allow people to connect on ways other than just work. I've seen affinity groups around running. I've seen people start an affinity group, which is just, hey, we want to collectively do this. You know, can we have 15 minutes in the boardroom before work to talk about our book club? Mm -hmm. And that removes hierarchy. It takes away all things and allows people to connect on something that everyone is interested in. So start doing some things like that yeah. to kind of amplify diversity. Uh, you know, I was having an interesting conversation on the same vein with, with my mom, of all people, the other day. And my mom and I are huge football fans, huge Carolina Panthers fans. We're yes. the loudest fans in the stadium. Your mom's are. awesome. Yes, <laughs> she is. She's something else. She'll love the shout out too. But um, one of the things that her and I both love about football is that my favorite football player's name is Cam Newton. Yes. You know, he's a black dude. Yes. You know, and I root for him just the same as I do for Christian McCaffrey, just the same as I do for Greg Olson, just the same as I do for the rest of my boys. You know, yes. and it. Football, particularly, is a sport that, that transcends race and yes. difference, and it transcends all the other things because 
you know, if you're wearing black and blue, you're you're who I'm rooting for. That's right. that's just you know the case in point of, of the whole situation. So um, last question here for you for the day, um, and then I'll, I'll do my little funny one as well. But if let's say you were starting all over again, and you say you know let's say you're I don't know 20, 20, 25 years old, something like that, and you say I want to be a human resources. So last year. So last year, yeah. Oh, oh, come on, Peter. Two years ago. Two years ago. How old are you? I'm just kidding. So, <laughs> so you know, let's say you're 20, 25. What steps would you recommend somebody in your space takes, not to be your competition, of course, but what steps would you recommend they take in order to, you know, create a business and a life and a career for themselves in your space? Um, that's a great question, and I'm often questioned by people who want to get started as an HR consultant or a consultant mm -hmm. and sell a service. Um, the first thing I say, obviously, is to know who your competition is. Yeah. Not because you want to go toe to toe with them, but maybe you see an opportunity, a space that they're not filling, mm -hmm. and you can partner with them yeah. and almost be mentored by them because there's no threat. And I do that often, um, and I'm grateful for those who did that for me when I was getting started. Um, understand your pricing structure. How, mm -hmm. much, how much are you worth, and how much are you willing to take when you get started? Because yeah. there's gonna be a disparity. Um, the next I would say get involved in networking groups because people need to know who you are and what you're doing It's a lot easier to start there than to try knocking door-to-door -door. HR services again is a tough one to sell. Yeah um, It is one that many companies need some of them may not know that they need that so find a way to open their eyes to what they don't know because you don't know what you don't know yeah. Right. So when someone is able to say hey have you checked on this or did you know about this? and they didn't, you've got an audience and something to build on. So I would probably say start in that place. Yeah, networking groups really are fantastic too. We, uh, we're both a part of a couple. Like I, I'm about to be part of the Rotary, and I'm already part of BNI, he's part of Blue. Mm -hmm. um, and all three of them, like, as long as you go in with the right mentality, Agreed. you don't want to just go in and have to take, 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 take. Okay. Right? You gotta go in with a helpful mentality. I would agree. But we, have, we find great success out of every networking group that we have. Yeah. I would absolutely agree. Um, I just did a, a presentation for the uh, North Carolina Association of CPAs, and one of the things I said is every year I think through what I need and what I can give in a group. It's also how I'm able to manage time because I've got a lot going on, it feels like. And I always make sure that I'm in a group that's industry specific. So I would say to anyone going into HR, get involved with something that is focused on your knowledge and growth of knowledge. I always join a group that uh, is women focused um, because I do believe women network differently and need different things from one another. I do belong to a networking group. Uh, not because I'm always, again, to your point, I'm not looking for a sales opportunity. Sometimes I'm in a networking group and I'm thinking of all of my clients and what they may need. And so I am listening intently thinking, you know, I know someone who needs this. I know someone who needs someone who does background checks and I'll meet someone and I'm so curious. I don't need them to reciprocate, they do. Um, I need them to help. And so it's that whole giver's gain kind yeah. of thing. But um, I do think that's important. And then of course I always cordon off enough time to volunteer. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Fun question. So at the end of every podcast, I like to ask people just a funny question, just to throw them off and see what kind of goofiness uh -oh. they, they can come up with. <laughs> and honestly, I've been sitting here thinking, I really don't think that I have a good one for you. Um, do you have any good? You better thank Carter, because I was kind of on you. <laughs> All right, hang on. Let me, let, me, let me take a couple deep breaths here. Um, okay, how many cups of coffee do you think we should have before a podcast? <laughs> more or less, more or less. What do you think? Where are we at, Where are we at with that one? I think you're fine. I can Perfect. go through at least six cups myself. Oh, perfect. I okay. Said a All right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think he should. I think you should have just enough to pronounce your last name correctly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I thought. I don't know why. I thought it was. I thought it was Simpson at first, and I was like, "What's going on?" That's I funny. Know. I've it, been it, called Simpskins. That one gets oh, me all the time. Yeah. Um, but at least yeah. I asked and got it right. So, you did. You know, I appreciate was, that. You know, I always, it, it seems like I always make at least one mistake per podcast. Another so. shout out though, we're looking for coffee shop sponsors. Coffee sponsors. Downtown yeah. Charlotte. Yeah. Coffee sponsors. We don't even want your money. Just, we, we want six shots of espresso. <laughs> All of them. That would be, that'd be the funniest podcast get it. ever. Yeah, yeah. Espresso is like my fun, my absolute most favorite thing in the world. April, um, so we like to also, uh, you know, give you a little shout out at the end here. Um, let's say somebody needs needs some help with human resources. How do they get a hold of you? Oh, great! They can find us through our website, which is um, which is hrssusa.com. 
Um, you can reach me through that website. You learn a lot more about us, our services, um, and who we support. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. That was fantastic, Gabriel. Awesome. Sorry, my oh. stupidness. <laughs> <laughs> I always do something like that. that was so, fun.